All right, you ready? Peak Performance, take one. Hi, guys, this is Peak Performance. <laughs> Hi, guys, welcome back to Peak Performance Engineer. Today, we're going to be working on our ATVs to get them ready for winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we picked up these two ATVs for the girls back in the summer of 2020, and we've been ripping them now for a couple years, and we haven't done any kind of service. So needless to say, we need to do an oil change. We're going to change the spark plug to a high-performance iridium spark plug, and her ATV also needs a battery. So I didn't see a lot out there on YouTube for how to do a lot of this stuff for these specific Apollo 125 ATVs. So we're going to kind of take you guys oh, through yeah. it. Uh, step by step and I've never you know like I said I've never done any service on these so we're gonna figure it out together let's get started all right guys so the spark plugs on these things are pretty simple to change so here is your uh, spark plug wire you're just gonna kind of pull kind of hard pop this dude off there and then here's your spark plug you're gonna need a 5 8 socket to go ahead and get that bad boy on out of there now on this bike I've already changed it out to an NGK uh, so let me show you Go. what you got with these. So the spark plugs that come in here are a 10 millimeter thread, half inch long reach with a gasket seat. So I pulled out some Autolite 4194s and the plug on this bike looks pretty good. Um, it really doesn't need to be changed, but I want to go ahead and replace it with a little bit better spark plug. Now this one here is, uh, you know, all the same specs, same 10 millimeter half inch reach, but instead of uh, just a standard uh, nickel electrode, this one's going to have a fine wire iridium tip. Now what this does is it helps to concentrate the spark a little bit better, and these plugs are also a little bit more resistant to fouling. They're going to last, you know, 10 times as long, something crazy like that. So we'll probably, in the time that we own this uh, ATV, we'll probably never have to replace this thing again unless it gets fouled out but um, this is a really good option from NGK um, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing back in there and then we can move on to the oil change all right so keep going until it comes out buddy so she's already in there she's got her 5 8 uh, spark plug socket on that little plug getting it on out of there all right so camo got the spark plug out let's take a look at it doesn't look good uh no actually this one we yeah. can get it to work looks pretty good actually yeah so now this ATV hasn't had much runtime really at all because it's always had some issues to get it to start. And, uh, and then the battery died, and then I replaced the battery, and then that battery died. So, um, and that was my fault just from not you know, charging the battery, keeping on a battery tender. So we've got a brand new battery we'll throw in, and then uh, let's go ahead and get the spark plug changed out. So with these NGK spark plugs, they have that silver kind of metallic coating on them. That's actually a trivalent zinc chromate coating and so with that coating they don't recommend and you don't need to use any kind of anti-seize when you're putting these things in so you just put these spark plugs in dry and then you go ahead and read the back of the box and it'll tell you how to uh tighten it down so it? you don't really need a torque yeah. wrench uh, as Ooh, you can see for example for this okay. 10 millimeter plug it's just going to get hand tight plus a half turn um, so just 180 degrees and then you're going to be good to go not want to over tighten these things uh, i've seen where the threads have snapped clear off the plug and then you will be in a whole world of hurt if that baby is stuck in your atv i came in like a rare all right spark plug change all finished now the next thing we want to do i'm going to go ahead and swap out the battery it's not too bad on her atv um, so these are both apollo 125s She's got this uh, Sniper Sport, and she's got the Sport Tracks, and they're basically the same exact ATV, but some of the plastics are different. Um, I'm trying to remember, this one looks pretty easy for changing the battery. But this is, yeah, so I think this one's even easier. So, yeah, and hers, she's got more room and stuff, so we got to go ahead and uh, pop all this out. Now, I've already got a thing on here for a battery tender, so we're going to, of course, put that onto the new one as well. So it's just going to be a couple bolts, and then we'll have to disconnect our cables, and then we can get it all swapped out for the new one. Look how small and cute this thing is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the old one out. We'll pop this bad boy in real quick and be good to go. All right, so we got our battery out, and here's our new guy. So all we got to do now is just take our little battery cover and get that dude all ready, and then we're going to put in uh, our, uh, our little, you know, things for our bolts, get those all set in there, and then we'll just pop this guy back in place. Oh, 
20 hours later. Old battery. Whoop. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, battery working. Let's go ahead and just check that off our list. All right, guys. So now we're moving on to the oil change here. So the oil, uh, you know, check tube, dipstick tubes just right here. And it looks crazy, but it's actually, you can get your hand back there uh, pretty easily to be able to go ahead and unscrew it. And then it looks like you'll probably have pretty easy access from up top to uh, go ahead and get your, your uh, oil fill tube down in there. So as far as draining this bad boy, when I looked in the manual, it said something about oil and then like oil and some kind of other case. So I basically see two things down here. I'm thinking this one's probably the oil and then this one's something else. So this is a 17 millimeter, that one's a 14 millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to crack both of those guys off and then just see if any oil, I mean, obviously I think oil's gonna come out of that one, but uh, I'm gonna try that other one too. And I'm not sure if we just fill it all up from one thing or what, but I'm gonna check out and see if there's anywhere else on the other side where, uh, cause that's probably, I think the transmission, I, I thought that's what it said, something in the manual about uh, the transmission needs some fluid, but it takes the same oil as the regular, uh, engine does so there's probably somewhere on the other side to fill it up all right guys so i just tried to take off that smaller 14 millimeter which is this guy here and uh i don't know it's something for the transmission but i wouldn't advise taking that off because as soon as i got to the end boom a huge ass spring like this long came shooting out um, so, so it was a pain in the butt to try to get that back in there. Uh, like a few little drips of oil came out, you know, but it, I mean, I didn't have it out very long, but, uh, I'm not going to bother with that. So <laughs> I'm just going to do the 17 millimeter and let's just go ahead and get that off and then get this oil drained out. And there we go. We got some liquid gold coming on out of there. Looks pretty good. So for the oil, it's recommending 15W40 in our owner's manual. What's funny is it doesn't say anything about how much oil to put into the actual engine. So that's really helpful. And if the other section I was telling you about where it talks about like the crankcase or transmission is here. So it's saying gearbox lubricating oil, 15W40, same as the engine, and then around like a half quart or so. But again, I, maybe it's that bolt, you know, with that crazy spring. So maybe I needed to let that roll out, but, uh, we don't have too much, you know, hours on there. So I'm not super worried about the crankcase, but I do want to make sure the motor's good. So we're going to just go ahead and fill that up. I guess I'm going to start out with like a half quart and we'll check it and see how that goes. Um, so what I'm using is just kind of one of these, uh, I don't know, little spouts and it's just got a little cup and then it's got kind of just a long tube. It's almost like a little mini, uh, beer bong. So. Get that in there, pour some fluid in there, and then uh, we should be good to go on the oil change. And then do hers next. All right, so I just got done filling it up and I did check the uh, oil dipstick and I put it about a half quart and that filled it up. It looked like if anything, maybe it's a little bit overfilled. So how many milliliters is this bad boy? 946, okay, so yeah, so I got 500. So I put in about 446 milliliters and you could probably do a little bit less, maybe 400. So I almost wonder what it has in that manual for this crankcase. It's really the engine oil. So 400 to 450 uh, should be about good. All right, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Uh, hopefully this video helps you out. We got a whole basically tune up, right? We changed the oil, we did the spark plug, and we even threw in a new battery. So check out some of the other videos on the page, guys. Lots of stuff with the Jeeps, with the death car build, with this Mustang that I'm building for the Hot Rod Power Tour. Check all those videos out. And if you like what you see, go ahead and uh, make sure you subscribe. Send me some uh, messages down below. All that good stuff, it really helps the channel. I certainly appreciate it. Take care, guys. See you on the next one.